2000 Toyota RAV4 P0141 code oxygen sensor replacement. Check the pink comma for the Tom Stamps. Diagnostics and testing of the sensor and ECM are next. Removal of the sensor starts at about the 1430 mark. Important info about avoiding counterfeit replacement parts is shown at about the 1830 mark. The install starts at about the 2345 mark. We can see here that that code is P0141, O2 sensor, heater circuit, bank 1 sensor 2. We'll take a look here at the diagnostic volume 1 on the Toyota FSM for the RAV4. And according to what I have here, the info in this video should be the same for the California models. You can see there's an exception for the California models um, for sensor 1, but since we're going to be working with P0141, that's going to be sensor 2. It looks like that's the same. When I look at the wiring diagram here too, I can see that this is our sensor 2, and there's just one one, uh, I said wiring diagram, it's a schematic. There's just one image for the schematic here, but there's two for the for, uh, sensor one, one for California and one for federal. So it does indeed look like if you were working with the California Emissions RAV4 on a P0141, that the info in the video should work for you too. According to our FSM here, we're gonna get that P0141 code when either the heater operates and the heater current exceeds two amps or it is below a quarter amp. And the trouble spots that we'll check are open or short in the heater circuit of the heated oxygen sensor, uh, the heated oxygen sensor heater, or the ECM. So ECM circuit or the sensor itself. We're going to do these diagnostics down here. I'll show you how to do this, but I know that most people don't like back probing the uh, ECM. I'm going to show you how to do that anyway, but the first one that I'll do simply because it is more likely that it is indeed the, the uh, sensor, the heater uh, circuit inside the uh, heated oxygen sensor that fails. We're going to skip to the second test on here. Um, which refers us to a different part of the FSM. We're going to find the connector, disconnect it, and we're just going to use this as a reference to check resistance with a multimeter, and we're looking for a certain resistance value. So let's find the sensor so we can disconnect it. You come over on the passenger side, the passenger door, and just swing right under here. You'll see that post-cat oxygen sensor. That's it right there. Yours will hopefully have a little heat shield on it. The heat shield's missing on this one. But this is the number two oxygen sensor, the heated oxygen sensor. So first thing we'll do before doing any removing is we'll just double check and troubleshoot. If we follow this electrical connection up, you can see it goes to a grommet here and up through the floorboard. We can get to the other side of this connector under the passenger seat. Here on the passenger side, if your RAV4 still has the little scissors jack that came that came with the vehicle, you can just turn it down here until it loosens and then pop it out. I've already done that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it out. With the jack out of the way, you'll notice that there is a cut in the carpet right here. And you can just pull this back. You can cut it open a little bit more if you need a little bit more access. If nobody's ever been in here before, this, I'll fill in here and you'll fill this wire. And this is our connector. There should be a little clasp that's holding it that's holding it to the body by a little uh, little white clip there, but this one's obviously broken. It's okay, it's not a big deal. Um, if you can't reach this connector and it does have that clasp, just pop it out. We're gonna press down on that tab right there and then pull this part this way. These can be tough to get. You gotta press really hard. So what I'll do at first is actually push this in a little bit so that I can get that clasp down. And then once I think I have it down, pull back but these are hard. You need like super thumbs. Okay, there we go. So let's check the sensor as described by that FSM page. We're gonna go down to, this is not an auto ranging meter, so I'm gonna go to ohms uh, 200 max because I'll put the chart up uh, at about room temp, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So not after a drive, let the car cool down before you do this test. We're looking for a resistance range between 11 and 16 ohms, so low resistance. And we're gonna be checking resistance across pins one and two. If you have a Toyota sensor, they actually have a little tiny one and two on there. It's also gonna be just the, the black wires or uh, using the uh, image in the FSM. 
we can also use these tabs as a reference so if I can get this to focus the these two tabs at the top those are the those are further apart these are close together we'll call this the top and this the bottom I'll cover these lower pins it's those top two pins that correspond with the black wires on the back that will check resistance across I'm just gonna use an alligator clip on here since I only got one free hand See if I can get on there well and I'll just touch here zero out my meter make sure we're good we are good and let's see what we got here all right in excess of 200 I think we are wide open so we're gonna go all the way up to 20 million and indeed this is a blown open heater circuit here on this sensor so we will definitely be replacing this sensor the other fail result that you could see is the opposite if you get in here and there's zero resistance if the reading comes back you know something like that except you're touching there then that would be a short also adhere to the uh, to the ratings that are listed at 11 to 16 ohm range if you get in here and it's 20 replace it if you get in here and it's 9 replace it assuming that you're checking it at the you know at the right temperature because the resistance uh, value does vary based on temperature so we will be replacing this sensor most of the time it will indeed be the sensor that causes that p0141 code however there is another cause so if you get in here and you do what we just did and you either get a blown circuit like you saw here infinite resistance an open circuit on the heater uh, or you get a value that's um, say 2 ohms or some value under that 11 ohms at 68 degrees Fahrenheit then you can stop skip up to this timestamp we'll go ahead and just get going with the sensor replacement but if you came in here and you got a good value let's say you got 12 or 14 ohms on your on your uh, sensor checking across those two on the top that one and two with the black wires well then keep watching because I'll simulate that for you how I'm going to simulate that is with this this is a known it's used but it's a known good sensor get back on here same pins one and two Put on the top there and you'll see that this is a good sensor uh, oops yeah, hopefully you can see that better there you can see this is a good sensor we got 14 ohm so what I'm gonna do is just plug this one in so this is simulating for you that condition we're gonna plug this in and we're gonna go over to the ECM over on the driver's side here we're gonna remove this fastener and then that plastic one there to get this panel off because the ECU is back behind there there's that one and then this is one of those plastic ones you just need to turn it out a little bit and it'll kind of pop out like that and this thing might pop out all the way and then we're just going to pull this panel off just kind of soon you get out of the way and there's our ECU here's a closer look at this page in the diagnostic manual we're going to be back probing the ECU with the connector in place you can see there's one two three connectors and to determine which one we're back probing we're going to use heater two since this note here says for uh, sensor two to use this heater two spot it's showing us that the heater two spot is the eighth over on the bottom of this first connector as we're looking at it so this is the driver's side that's the passenger side this is drawn out just the way the same way we're going to look at it um, the other thing I also like to do if I possibly can, and I can in this case since I do have this wiring diagram or schematic anyway, I can confirm that says HT2, that's the same as heater 2. It's a red wire with a white stripe. So we'll have a double a way of doubly confirming it. We'll be looking for a red wire with a white stripe going into the eighth spot on the bottom of this first connector. So what we'll do is just stick a pin in there and we will check voltage to a body ground it's saying just check voltage to a body ground and we're expecting the normal condition if there's no check engine light and if the sensor works and if the ECU is good the normal condition is 9 to 14 volts. I'll take the readings twice once with the known good sensor and once with our now known bad sensor 
the one that we measured resistance on that we know is blown. And the one that is blown, we're going to be expecting no voltage across there. The one that's good, we will be expecting to see this voltage. So again, the purpose of this test is in particular for the rare case that you're getting the P0141 code, but you just did the test that we did and you checked the sensor itself and your resistance is good. It's between 11 and 16 ohms. You're saying, well, that's weird. What could possibly be causing it? Well, the thing that could possibly be causing it is the ECU. So that's the purpose of this check. So let's check that out right now. Looking at the ECU here, it's kind of hard to tell, but there are three harnesses. This is the first one, there's the second one, and that's the third one. You can kind of tell by looking at these wire looms. We're just going to be back probing that red and white wire there. It comes down on the bottom. I'm trying to give you a good look at that harness there. We're going for that eighth spot, so to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you can see the wire going in there is this this wire here, red with a white stripe. So I'm just going to stick this pin in there to just like that. Doesn't need to be in there crazy tight, just enough to be able to get a voltage reading. So there's the setup. I'm just going to get my alligator clip ready. Put my alligator clip there, and I've already checked. This is a good body ground this fastener back there so that's what you will use for that make sure you get your meter into your voltage setting so move your dial if you have to i'm over here at 20 volts max you see my alligator clips on there i'll just take the keys put them in the ignition and turn it to the on position not start just on so we'll hear the relays click 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 on position the beeping will stop and with this other side, I'm just gonna touch that good, convenient body ground right there. And I should be getting nine to 14 volts here. And there you go. You see, I got about 12 volts there. So what you're seeing here is the condition for a known good sensor and a known good ECU. This would not be normally tripping a code. Uh, what we're doing here as the second step on this for the diagnostics is in case you see both of these circumstances and you are consistently getting a P0141 code and a check engine light, but you know that your sensor is good because you've checked the resistance on it as we already did. And you've done this test and you know that it's actually getting voltage on the circuit. Then what the uh, diagnostic guide is telling you is to start suspecting the actual ECM. All right, now I just went over to the passenger side and I disconnected that good sensor and plugged in again the bad sensor, the one that we have yet to replace, so that I can show you what it looks like when you've got a bad sensor plugged in and you do this same test. So same setup, you can see I haven't moved the pin, haven't moved anything, put the key back in the ignition, go to the on position. On position, we'll use that same ground in the back there, and you'll see that we will not be getting battery voltage here. There you go. All right, so we're not getting voltage here because this circuit that we're testing is for that heater. And as we know, because we've already tested the sensor, the, the heater circuit on the sensor itself by going and checking resistance and getting an open circuit there, we know that that's open. So this would be this is a normal expected result here so just to reiterate the unusual circumstance is an ecu failure and the ecu failure will manifest with a p0141 code and a good sensor heater so the you check that with the resistance value it comes back okay and then you come over here and you check this and you're getting uh, uh, battery voltage here. If you come across that set of circumstances, then you're going to suspect the ECU. So what I would do in that case is try to just find like a junkyard ECU, match the, the part numbers and swap it out. Um, it's not going to be your catalytic converter and it wouldn't be your sensor. Back under here to remove the oxygen sensor, we just have to remove these two nuts here. Now these have been replaced fairly recently. You can see they look pretty good. A lot of times, if they're the originals, I'll put up a picture of what they look like. They're going to be probably even rounded out. If that's the case, what you're seeing, check the pin comment for a link 
have a video to show you how to extract these if that's the case or if these studs came off completely I also have a video to show you how to deal with that problem but uh, in any case you're going to want to shoot a little bit of penetrating oil in this case I'll just use a little, oops, a little PB blaster on here and let this soak for a minute if yours has the original Toyota pinch nuts those are 14 millimeter on the outside here uh, these are replacements and these are 13 millimeters so you'll see me using a 13 but I'm just going to break these free also when they you'll see for the install because I will install a heat shield it's a little more difficult to work around the heat shield uh, you have to pick your tools a little bit more carefully let's see if we make this cracked free All right. this is going to look a lot easier on the video than probably what you're dealing with because these are such fairly new replacement fasteners here. Oops. But again, check the pin comment for uh, some solutions in case you're running into problems with these studs or with the pinch nuts. Alright, there are those fasteners off, and now this will just pull right out, like so, and this is a gasket, this is pretty cooked on there, I'll have to pry that off, but this, you do want to replace this gasket, if you get a new sensor from Denso, it'll come with a gasket, I'm going to have to pry that off, yeah. Now we can just remove this 10 millimeter fastener that's holding this little bracket and then I'll show you how to get that grommet off so we can pull the other end of the sensor out. There's that. I'm just going to put that right back in the hole so we don't lose it. And then with the grommet here, you can just use a screwdriver or some kind of pry to get under here. And just pull it out like that. And then pull the other side of that sensor right out. There we go. Let's see what I can do to get this old gasket off. I'm just going to get behind here and see if I can tap it some. There we go. Oops. There we go. Sometimes these are really like petrified on here. You just got to do the best that you can to remove the old one. There we go. That's the old one there. So I will clean this up. You can see that's some of the old gasket material there. I'll clean this up. So we'll just be able to get a nice seal here so we don't end up with an exhaust leak. Something I want to mention in case I forget later, you might have to come back in here with a file and clean this up if there's a lot of carbon uh, residue and carbon buildup if you're getting one of the new Denso sensors because the, uh, the diameter on there, it fits, it's 5 eighths of an inch, but sometimes if this is real built up with carbon, you'll go to put the new sensor in and it's, it's like, huh, it doesn't fit, it's too tight. If you just come back in here with a file and just clean this up, just remove that extra carbon, then you'll be able to get the, the sensor in. As you can see there, this old oxygen sensor is indeed a Denso, probably the original. That's an old part number though that is discontinued. Uh, it says 89465-42040. Uh, the best way to do this with the, uh, with the replacement sensor is either to get a known good used sensor, like from a yard or something, or to buy the Denso. This is the part number for the Denso. There it is there. I'm going to get into detail on this. You'll see me actually install a known good used sensor on this particular RAV4. But this, this uh, new sensor is going on another RAV4, so since I have the chance to show you both, I will do that. You can get a good look at them. Here's the new O2 sensor. This is a genuine Denso. There's the part number there, 2344214. And it's assembled in USA from foreign components. This is what these boxes look like. These get counterfeited a lot, so do be careful that you're not... If the price seems too good to be true, it probably is. When you open it up, the sensor will be in a bag. I've already opened the bag uh, to check it out before, but I'll show you here. It does come with the gasket. comes with these two inserts as well. 
That's what that looks like there. That's for swapping out the grommet. And then this one here. Got this insert. About just the uh, removal and install. So we'll take a quick look at this. On this particular one, with that part number, it does come with the grommet. And this is what this looks like. All right, there's our there's our gasket, and that's the design on this here. And we'll look here at the marks. Got that etching. It says Denso assembled in USA four two one eight zero. And it looks like maybe 01C28 or something like that. Okay. There we go. Plug. Same on the back there. And up here. Same deal. We'll go ahead and check this new one too, just to be sure. Remember that we're going to hold it in this orientation. Put that up that top that way and these two on that side. And there we are, 13, 13 ohms, we are in spec. Here's a look at the new Denso next to an old one. This is a good old one, but it's still an old one. You can see they are very similar. A little different shape up here on the sensing end. But this collar is the same. This here is very similar. Down here is very similar. The Densels are a lot thinner down here than some of the real chunky aftermarket or uh, fake Densels. So those are just some things for you to look at if you're trying to make sure that you do have a genuine Denso. Let me try to give you a good comparison here. Now this here, I will say, this moves down, right? So the design on this one's a little different. That's clamped in there. This moves down, but it's not a big deal. You can either leave it like this or like I did. You could just kind of squeeze that, that cover and just kind of get it up over there. Now we need to swap this old bracket onto the new one. And it's real easy. These little, little thin little things here, those just peel. Those just can kind of peel up with the screwdriver. A little bit of rust on there. Let's get those up enough that we can get it out of there. That's enough to get that out. And then I'll slip this on here like that. I forgot to mention here about this clamp. The, uh, the OEs have this uh, double ear clamp here that was obviously installed on before they put this part of the plastic on the connector. You can tell by the size of it, but the new Denso doesn't come with any kind of clamp, but you can just use a zip ties or you can use maybe like a worm screw jiggly clamp, whatever you'd like, something that can you can open up to get around here. You're just preventing a draft. That's pretty much all that's doing is preventing a draft because you do have it you know, secured in place with the brace and all. I got this surface cleaned up here. It doesn't need to be spick and spam. You just want a good surface um, so you're not going to end up with an exhaust leak. This is the new gasket here. I actually like the Dorman version of this gasket better because I think it deforms better. But this is the Toyota one. I also put up that part, uh, Dorman part number. This does deform quite a bit, so it's okay that it's a rough surface. You just don't want any big chunks of stuff like what we saw earlier. There's the new cover. That's the part number there. You can get this from Toyota for about 15 bucks. I'll put the gasket on with that side facing out. I don't think it matters much, but I do believe that's the way it typically is. We'll slide that on there. Grab our new sensor, or in this case, our used sensor. A good used sensor. And we'll stick that in there. Again, if you're doing a new sensor and you find that it's not fitting because of the... Uh, feature down here on the the base of the sensing nose there just get in here and file it down and you will be able to get it it'll if it's a 5 8 it will fit in there if you do a little work to remove the carbon 
And now we got to put our new cover on, which is going to go facing this way like so. And then you grab your Toyota Pinch Nuts if you're coming back on with those. I'm going to come back on with some prevailing torque nuts. Use the Toyota Pinch Nuts or some uh, flange nuts, some uh, pinch flange nuts, and you won't have to worry about using the washers, but this will work. Tighten them up about evenly, especially as you get closer to the final clamping. Now switching over to the torque wrench. Torque is 32 foot-pounds. Get back in place here. And that was a 10 millimeter. All right. Go oh, to get this back in here. Just tuck that in. And the carpet's going to be pushing back at you from above, so you might have to kind of guide it in a little bit and then adjust it when you get in the cab in a second. And then this, we're going to get this on the inside and then on the outside. So we're trying to get the body right in between there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right. Back in here, we'll lift the carpet up and fish around for the other end of that sensor. Here it is here, all right. And just route this in an efficient way over here, back to our connector. And it only fits one way. We're just gonna snap it, push it in until it gets a good Good clean snap. Snap and double check. Okay, if yours has this clamp and you and it can align with that little hole, go ahead and put that back in there. If you got this little scissor jack, this can go back in here too. Just line it up with this bracket and then the other metal bracket behind and then turn the other end to get it to just kind of open up enough that it stays in one place. Now the repair is done. We'll go ahead and erase this code and go for a little test drive. It's been more than just a couple trips. It's been a couple weeks, but no check engine light came on or anything. I did go ahead and just let this run through. Uh, I did enough trips under enough conditions to make sure that this would pass emissions. So I'll show you what that looks like here. We'll let this do its thing and then look at the results. There we go, MIL, that's the same as CEL or check engine light. MIL stands for malfunction indicator light. Status off, that's good. Codes found, zero. Monitors not available, two. Monitors okay, eight. And monitors incomplete, zero. So this is all good. This would pass emissions on that inspect. So we'll just go here, make sure there's no pending codes. We know there's no stored codes, but we'll go ahead and look at that anyway. No stored codes. So this was the fix for this P0141. So that is a wrap. I hope this video was helpful for you with your oxygen sensor replacement. Thank you for watching and good luck with your repair.